Hello guys, welcome back to Tech Cruise. Today I will be doing a 250 kilometer review uh, as I think it's well worth making this video to let people know about more about the scooter and what are the, some maybe pros and cons in the scooter. There is honestly one con that I can find out after riding for so long is this reflector at the back. It is the most annoying thing on this entire scooter. The whole thing is built so well. It's just like shaking everywhere and it makes it feel like a $10 scooter, not like a $20,000 scooter. Like this thing is really well built, but that one little just annoys me so much. But everything else, like the screen, it's okay, but you can definitely see it in some areas, like I said in my other video. The twist throttle is amazing. Uh, everything's just built awesomely. The suspension that you can adjust, it's just next level, like new gen uh, future technology right there. I've never seen a scooter that was being able to adjust the suspension. There is one thing that I would like to say in one of my other comments in one of my videos is one of you said that, oh, I would rather have like sticking out uh, indicators so everyone can see me. But this scooter is so well made with all the lighting at the front, on the sides. You can see it from really far away while you're driving in the nighttime. But the solid tires, it's definitely made for commuting in the city definitely not made for like more rural areas or places where you've got wet grass because i have tried uh driving around in grass different terrains gravel dirt uh even normal pavement it's all perfect except for if the pavement is wet it happens with like every scooter where the back can just swing around you're like if you're drifting unless you want to feel like you're in like the movie uh fast and furious or something and you want to be gangster you can drift around in these scooters because they will definitely spin their back um it's very fun the suspension's awesome like i said just then um the another thing that i guess would be better is to have the tires at the front a bit bigger because they are quite small but then at the same time it uses less weight because the tires are smaller and because they're solid tires uh, they don't have as much weight on them which was perfect because this is definitely made as a commuter scooter so it's a lot easier to fall down the scooter and carry it around with you instead of having bigger tires that add way more weight because they would be bigger uh, and make it harder to walk it up in different cities and when you have to get up the stairs you can just grab it and walk off nicely without any strain into your back. I would also like to add is this dual motors. The Makuta 8 has only a single motor, as it says in the name 8 Plus, which has dual motors and not single. I can definitely say that is a huge difference between one motor and two motors. I have conquered a couple really steep hills that I knew this thing wouldn't make it up in single motor. I tried, but once I activated dual motors, it is so hard to control this thing because it has so much torque when holding on. It's insane. It's like trying to hold onto a horse when it's trying to run away from you. You're just getting dragged by it. Um, I'd also like to add is this front light. I really like it, but it could be placed in a different area as me personally, I really like adding these packs at the front of the scooter where I can have all my uh, power banks where I could have like a toolkit or even a drink bottle that I could be holding over there. 
Uh, so this is just blocking my light. So I don't really have any other light sources except for this thing. But it's, it's like, it's not even that bad. Like this thing's like bright, but it, obviously it's not as bright as like a normal light that's made to shine the path. But it's, it still uses really well, especially when driving like onto a path and it's like darker or in a, like a darker street where somebody can't see you this can like nicely light it's like an illumination or like a led light just like spreading the light all around which is quite nice another great thing about the scooter is the wide handlebars these are extremely wide they may get a bit too wide sometimes if you're driving past people in a city and there's a lot of people you wish they had shorter handlebars but trust me, the comfort you get because of having wide handlebars is so nice. I've ridden so many other scooters that I hope when I, after, after riding this one, I go into a different scooter, I'm like, I wish I had these type of handlebars on every other scooter. It is so stable that it just makes it so comfortable at the same time that I can easily go through anything without a problem or worrying about anything because I've got wide handlebars I can comfortably hold my scooter the controls on this scooter are really comfortable and they're really well laid out as the horn is exactly where your thumb would normally rest or like right underneath the grip where you have it where you can just slightly put your finger up and just press it same thing with the indicators where you can turn them on it's just a switch to the side to one of the sides of where you're turning um, on the right side we've got the gears I would possibly prefer the switch gone the opposite way so if I want to go faster I want to go up but the way that like it jumps the letters I'd want it to have like eco sport then race instead of sport race eco because the way that you're switching the switch on the right side you'd expect it to go up to go into higher modes but if you look at the screen it does go into the higher mode but the lettering is put on the opposite side so it just kind of confuses the person who's riding it because you're like if you don't know the difference between race and sport you won't know if you're going faster or not and what the speed limit is on that exact mode so I would probably prefer that and then obviously you've got the M button that uh, you can take out the battery Taking out the battery is very useful for people who live in apartments that just have to take out the battery, leave the scooters down there, downstairs, lock it up and then you can take it out and go charge it upstairs and not worry about your scooter being taken because I can't really do anything unless they have a second battery for the scooter. You can tighten it or loosen it without any problems. My current layout is having harder suspension at the back as my main body weight is on my back foot that's leaning on this like really nice footstep and my front doesn't have that much weight. That's why I have softer suspension at the front because it like rebounds off all the bumps so I don't feel anything inside the handlebars while I'm holding it. And then the back is just there because I'm already kind of squatting with my body weight that makes it nice and smooth without it bottoming out because if I had it too soft, I would bottom out really easily. I talked about the hook and it's awesome. You can use it in so many different areas where you can't even possibly imagine. Like if you're going shopping, obviously you can have your mini pouches here. You could probably max fit like two or three on there, which I feel like is not enough for somebody who's gone for normal grocery shopping or like a quick go and back. Uh, so you can hook your grocery bag onto this hook and hold it without being scared that it would fly off somewhere. Or I've seen some people hold their bags in the middle of the scooter, holding their feet together, trying to hold the groceries which I do not recommend as your braking and your accelerating is gonna be very sketchy as you can go flying forward or backwards because of how fast the acceleration is on these motors. Also, the, you can mount a mini speaker. I've got the JBL Clip 3 that I mount onto here and I can casually have it sitting here uh, and listen to my own music with maybe other people listening to it because I listen to some good beats, you know? The throttle on the scooter 
is so well calibrated that you can't even feel that you've got square controllers. If you have a normal thumb throttle, you can really feel the square controllers in your scooter as there's a huge dead zone in trying to accelerate. Because it's a twist throttle, it eliminates that dead zone and they calibrated it so well that you can't even feel that it's there. And it sort of feels like a sine wave controller, but at some point, if you're in dual motor, um, you can start feeling the jitteriness or like the, the, like the power difference once you accelerate. It's like a jerk trying to pull you forward. But at the same time, if you're in single motor, you, you can just like casually just cruise on like different levels of the throttle and it feels completely different than what a square controller would feel like. The suspension that they made on the scooter is really well built. It is really easy to adjust, even for a person that knows not a single clue about e-scooters. You get this mini QR code that's uh, connected to your handlebar that you can get rid of later on after you've educated yourself on this beautiful scooter. Uh, you scan the QR code with your phone and you have a whole entire manual. Instead of them giving you a fat booklet that lots of manufacturers do, you can just scroll to a page where you want to find what you're looking for. And if you're looking to adjust your suspension, uh, you can get the key that they provide you. You can tighten it or loosen it without any problems. My current layout is having harder suspension at the back as my main body weight is on my back foot that's leaning on this like really nice footstep and my front doesn't have that much weight that's why I have softer suspension at the front because it like rebounds off all the bumps so I don't feel anything inside the handlebars while I'm holding it and then the back is just there because I'm already kind of squatting with my body weight that makes it nice and smooth without it bottoming out because if I had it too soft I would bottom out really easily. If you're a person who loves socializing, this scooter is definitely an extra perk as it is definitely a wow factor for many people as the scooters that you normally see around are white, black or grey, so plain, not like interesting, there's no cool lights on it or anything. On this one you've got all these nice orange accents, you've got them on the suspension, even on the lights. You've got the hook, you've even got the uh, handlebar folders, they even are like nicely accented and it's not only like a normal orange, it's like a shiny orange, like a sparkly orange. The attention to detail that they put into their scooters is really nice as well, like all of these little accents, the uh, grips to make them nice and comfortable, the controls where they are, it's a completely different module to every other scooter they've released recently. Um, and it's just different in its own way. It's just like its own little, uh, I guess, category of just like perfection. Like the cheap, it's like on the cheap side, but they still keep like all the quality and they keep all the good stuff that you'd want on a scooter to help you do your own commuting and do your own fun activities. I would like to mention that I would definitely wear protection on my knees and uh, on my elbows and obviously your helmet um, as a couple weeks ago actually no three days ago uh, I tried to do a wheelie and I kind of fell off the scooter and I scraped my knee and it really hurt so from now on whenever I try to do something fun and less straight on or just driving I, I will make sure that I will definitely wear protection on myself as I seriously do not want to injure myself again and stop me from riding my e-scooter for a bit because trust me it's not fun sitting at home and going oh I wish I didn't do this because then I would be able to ride my e-scooter around. And as always thank you guys so much for watching this video I hope you learned something new about the Makuta 8 Plus and what some things I hope Makuta fixes later on maybe in like the V2 or if they 
put like a 2.0 or something, whether it improved the scooter, make it a bit better. Uh, that bumper definitely is annoying. I wish they'd change it. Um, I really hope you guys like this video. Please like and subscribe as it can help me create more content. Uh, another thing is I really want you guys to maybe put in some comments, maybe something you liked about the video, something you didn't like, maybe something you'd like for me to explain about the scooter or something you don't like or dislike. Uh, or even like about the scooter, maybe uh, some video recommendations for me to do. Um, it would really help me a lot. And as always, ride safe and keep exploring. What the frick is that? Holy moly! Uh, it for you taking a uh, bleh, 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 I'm broken. I'm broken. Bleh. On the scooter is wowing like it's not like a matte orange not like a bleh orange or a brownie orange it's like a sparkly orange like a metallic orange what the frick? Makuta 10 Plus, uh, I have no clue what that is, Dragon V2. <laughs> <laughs>